We bought a Porsche Boxster with a blown engine for $500. Crammed in my dad's five liter Mustang motor, stripped off the body, and now we're building a new one based on 1960s legends like the GT40 and Lamborghini Miura. Last week, we came up with the reticulated vessel method for putting together the framework for our front clamshell. Now we're gonna finish putting it together. All that and more in this week's episode of Project Jigsaw. These three hoops are the main building blocks for the entire front end of our car. We've got them locked in to our reticulated vessel jig, and now we're ready to hook them together with a grid of aluminum tubing. This jig will hold all these tubes exactly where we want them as we connect them. Next thing we need to do is bend some pieces that we weld in between to build that grid that will frame out the shape of this entire front end. To determine the shape of each of those pieces of tubing, we're gonna need a tool. This is a profile gauge. If you have a shape you're trying to copy, you can just wrap it around there. And if you have four hands, it's easier. But it will hold the shape and you can copy it. The spacing on this is set up perfectly for the length of this profile wow. gauge. that did work out really nicely. Yeah. I tried that. Yeah, of course you did. So then we can look down here, get the curve, a nice even curve that flows between the three tubes, lock it down, and that's what we'll bend our tubing to. It will get more complex as we move to some of the other... Um, Three-dimensional bends, yeah. I would say. Yeah. We'll start with the easy one first. <laughs> yeah. Nice catch. Thanks. Thanks. Mark this. Wow. I can't write. I think that's the hieroglyphic for aluminium. <laughs> well, let's try this tape instead. Perfect. Why don't you give me that the first time? You didn't ask for it. I asked for tape and you brought me the other stuff. I blame you. Be glad to give you duct tape. I blame you. Let's try marking this again. <laughs> Get there from here. Ew! That's a <laughs> sharp, sharpie. It's fine for so. cardboard. It's fine for cardboard. You want some gloves? No. This is an ink saw only zone. And front, another FR for front. Yeah, this definitely needs a little straightening at this end. We transfer the uh, profile onto the cardboard so that we can keep that data. Because that gauge is going to be used many times or, you know, get bumped, which usually happens whenever I use it. I'll set it down somewhere and I'll get just tweaked just a little bit and then won't be accurate anymore. Antonia, after many attempts of figuring out how to, took the time to mark where each tube is on here so that we know where they line up at from when we use the whole saw. Yeah. Punch it out. I was going to make fun of you for wearing safety glasses. Then I remember that your safety glasses are also bifocals. Correct. Now I can see you. Don't you dare, <laughs> I saw you going for it. <laughs> we tried to use a profile gauge, and if you look down it, there's like spots on it where it got flat. It was a little high here, yeah. and then at the end it just flattened out. Because there's nothing I, I can lay against, because there's only three points. Yep. What we did was we marked the three points on the table, and then we took welding rod, and then ran that welding rod along the three points, and then that rod automatically bent itself to like a nice smooth arc. So then we taped our new line, it's the, it's the edge on the right here. You can see up there where it got a little flat, but the tape is uh, a little bit better. We've never used the contour gauge exactly like we were describing. We were going to use it, and it turns out there might be a good reason for that. <laughs> Fight you. <laughs> Bendomatic. This tube's from the original first time we annealed. And it's one of the outside tubes, I think. Yeah. Which were not as annealed as well. You're way overbent. Yeah. 
It got softer as I went, but yeah, overall I'm overbent. That rhymed. If it rhymes, it's true. Mm. I guess I started watching you struggle, so. <laughs> ah, you worked on it. I took matters in my own did. hands. So the idea here now that we have our main hoop is we marked the three intersections for the main hoops. I'm going to use a rotor brooch that's half inch, which is the same diameter as the tube here. And we're gonna like hole saw through us at an angle, just like you would if it was like too big on like a roll cage or whatever else that you'd make out of tubing. But before I even use this, I'm gonna use a uh, pilot bit to keep it from walking. I can use gravity and just Clico, Clico clamps, which are really handy because they're just Clicos, but they are sprung they and they clamp. Don't get your finger in these, because it's not very pleasant. Then I can uh, slide them up and down here because this the edge of the steel here is supposed to be dead center according to my CAD drawings. Here we go, I'll just wedge this here. There you go. <laughs> you know what, it works, all right? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm happy with that. I was when I looked at it the it, last time. It rotated a little bit there when I like, oh, you know what's wrong? You took my wedge out. Uh, it just kind of fell, actually. Wait, yeah, you took it out by wiggling other stuff. Like, why does it seem so loose suddenly? You got your wedge back. Mm -hmm. The Clico tool that I mm -hmm. couldn't use because it was wedged in there. Don't worry about it. What did you do to the zip tie? Tony, you're not gonna believe this, but uh, I may have... Uh, Melted all of them. The zip ties have left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. should maybe like switch from the safety wire or something. That's not a bad idea, yeah. <laughs> if we're gonna be welding close to them anyway. Before we melt all the rest of the ones on, it becomes a big mess. Yep, yep, like safety wire still. seems yeah. like uh, the way to go. looks good. Look at what you did, Ryan. We did it yeah, together. Yeah, well, that's true, we did it. It took two dudes to put, you know, 36 inches of tubing, <laughs> of tubing on there. in there. So, but whatever. That, it's already made a big difference in this. And so now, we'll just keep on that trend, but the next piece is gonna be more complex because it doesn't go perpendicular to these tubes. So yeah, it's three-dimensional. Run this valley and from this side, it looks like a peak, but. Yeah, I say it looks like a peak from this side, but <laughs> yeah. it is a valley in yeah. the car because yeah. it's going to be, yeah. you know, that way. So we'll run this valley with the next piece of tubing and tying all them together down there. You think like right there? Yeah, that looks good. This is not our, our rollers, Amos's, and we're definitely marking all over it. <laughs> and by we, I mean I am. <laughs> Well, that's all right. Half the numbers are wiped off. Oh yeah, that was also me. That was me at one point too. Amos had to rewrite it back one because I wiped it with some carb cleaner. I could easily get him a free one from Eastwood, but I haven't done it. <laughs> Eastwood, if you're watching this, can you send me two meter sticks, please? Thank you. <laughs> I told you to get out of my way. It's like a dead animal on the road when they're painting lines. That would definitely be me if I was painting lines. I would not care. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I didn't want to film that anyway. You look like you're trying to squeeze out a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> Is it working? This one's a bit more complicated because since the tube's like a more three-dimensional bend, even the hole saw cuts need to be, you know, I don't know, like a 15 degree angle. We'll see if we can manage. That's what I I'm holding this for, fill yeah, those spaces. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I almost died. Yep.
little stressful. I wasn't sure if we were gonna get lined up. Yeah, I, I <laughs> but we came out on top. It's amazingly good. <laughs> yeah. The old eye strikes again. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little little bit of wiggle in this, but it's in the tube itself. Not worry about that. Nope. Handmade car, baby. Yep. It's got the That's handmade probably charm. Just ding it, Doug. <laughs> yeah, because somebody threw it with a drill. <laughs> he threw it with a drill and uh, dinged it. The yeah. Ding bat. The, the drill did that. I blame mm. the drill. Two down, one to go, and then we flip it. There's a little more curve in this wire than there is in that marker line I already put down. See it? I do see it. Do you think they were being too nitpicky? I never think I'm being too nitpicky. <laughs> Here, put this on. I'm gonna make a cup of coffee, so I don't wanna miss anything. Okay. You can't, you can't be trusted to film yourself, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna film you for yourself. Okay, thank you. Can't be trusted to film myself. No, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. What a beautiful morning. Hello. That's hot. What a miss. Nothing. I thought you'd be done by now. So you think that bending this piece of tubing should take the same amount of time as getting a cup of coffee? I mean, I did not rush at all. So you shouldn't get a cup of coffee is what you're saying. Wait, I'm judging Tony on his like Tony extrusion method of uh, yeah. bending tube. It just got to a hard spot in the tube. It just does not want to bend. Have you tried, you know, getting better Pushing at it? Pushing harder. You try getting good? Yeah, nah, haven't tried that yet. I can't take you seriously with the GoPro in your head, honestly. No, that makes sense. You think it's annealing time? Uh, yeah, it's annealing time. If you're new here, we're just annealing this aluminum tubing because it's way too hard to bend. And what this does is it resets the molecules in the aluminum to make it much softer and a little bit more pliable. Sounded really technical. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. I'm, I'm smarter than I, 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 I look, I think, or sound, especially with the cold. <laughs> Clean that soot off, it looks bad. Yeah, this is how you clean up the soot. This fire, makes sense, right? Yeah. Do you think vampires would show up on the thermal cam? Um, they're, they're, dead. they're already dead. So they would so. Be like, yeah, I feel like they would be like room temperature. All right, so at least you're, we know you're not a vampire. That should do it. We've been over this. The weld will uh, take up the difference. The worst part about these uh, rotor brooches is everything gets jammed up inside them if it's thick. Especially when it's soft aluminum yeah, that just mushes yeah, in there. Yeah, exactly. And they're also really sensitive and like sharp, so you don't want to mess them up. But we'll beat them against the vice anyway. Did it work? Is that your drill? <laughs> it is my drill. <laughs> 
This is a very sensitive piece of equipment that you should not be abusing in any way, shape, or form. I found the best way to get it out is with the aluminum carcass, because the aluminum's not going to uh, not dead, mess yeah. up the, yeah, it's not gonna mess up the steel. Aluminium. See? There it is. Wait. Is there one in there? Yeah, no wonder I'm gonna have so much trouble. You left one in there from before when you were cutting. I was done cutting. <laughs> Release the clamshell. <laughs> Release Ooh. the clamshell. That's cool. That's really cool. Hey, that's very warm still. <laughs> he lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was cool, but it's warm. We got our framework set on the car. We were looking at a couple of things yesterday and there are a few things off from where we expected them to be. And we slept on it overnight and thought about it. And we wanna change things. So there's two major things. The first one is when I did the 3D scan and then did the 3D model that we 3D printed to clay work, I messed up the windshield. The windshield rake was way off and the clay model, it ends up to be about here straight down instead of, you know, where it is currently on the car. So our cow and line- that's, that's is, because the glass didn't show up in yeah, the Yeah, because the glass is clear, so it didn't show up in the scan. Um, I should have thrown something on the glass to scan it so it actually would have worked. I was excited and skipped a step. So that's, that's, my, that's my fault. Um, so that kind of throws off our cowl line and why- Ryan gets excited sometimes. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. yeah. That's what happens. I mean, we're a two man team, not a 30 man team building a car for Mercedes. So that's actually probably light, probably more like 200 man, but still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was an oversight in my fault that threw off some things, but isn't it a really big deal? Because we could just kind of change our swoop to go this way around the windshield. However, there's uh, something else that's a little bit bigger. The other problem is this gap, it's huge. We don't want the normal tire tucked to the fender like we usually do, but this is just way too much, which means this whole section is just way too wide. How did it happen? Probably the, the largest part of it was just moving from one six scale, um, you know, beginner grade scanners kind of things and beginner grade CAD level kind of things. Listen. <laughs> but mostly I'm still here. But yeah, mostly the first one. I think that I think the largest part was in scale. Um, we noticed that it might be a problem when we first got this hoop bent. Uh, but at that point, we were pretty committed. We already had all our profiles cut. We already had our jig put together. Um, so we decided that even if we wanted to make adjustments, it was going to be after that point. We got to this point and we're like, yes, we need to make adjustments, but not until we finish wiring the rest of this together. Then we can shrink it all together as one unit without having to go back to the drawing board with all of that work. So for the moment, we're gonna do just that. We're going to run these last two hoops, get this all one piece, and then we'll probably do a little sectioning to bring it together and just shrink that up a bit. I think in the final product, other than a couple extra welds, it won't even show up. First things first, we gotta pour slides out. Who is it? We had, we had to uh, cut that board shorter because it was blocking the uh, top of our jig here.
All right, Tony, to make this a little bit more interesting, because people don't know this watch is bend tubing all over again, let's see who can bend their hoop faster. Seems a little unfair, because you're not very picky about how you do it. We but I'm also better at you than it, so. Well, right, that's also but, unfair. But, no, I mean, on top of all that, I have a cold right now, so that's holding me back, so. <laughs> We need an impartial judge to determine that it meets the we'll shape. We'll get Luis to do it when he's, when he's okay. in. The terms are, whoever can bend their tube to the arc on the table first, both accurately and the fastest, will we, we'll have the judge choose for points. They win. Challenge accepted. He accepted it, let's do it. Which of these two arcs do you want? I'll let you pick. All right, I'll take this one. The, the more curvy Under one? Peak. It's a little bit easier because it's, it's a sharper curve. You're smart. I, well, I know that I tend to bend, over bend it, so. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right. But I'm gonna need you to say that I win because my piece is better. He's gonna be faster than me. I will give up my parking spot. You can have my parking spot for the rest of the year. Just the parking spot? What about if we talk about the holidays, maybe an extra week vacation a year? An extra week's vacation? How, come on, how about like uh, 15 minutes paid extra lunch every day? Deal. Tony is claiming that I gave him the non-annealed aluminum. Correct. I think that he's just full of excuses because I've been done now for like four minutes. He definitely grabbed the uh, tube that was less annealed for sure, but don't tell him that. All right, so it's judging time, mm -hmm. and you can see here my tubing matches perfectly. Mm -hmm. I can tell. Yeah. Uh, I, that doesn't look right. Is there? There, there you go. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yep. What about the side? That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That was definitely not like that earlier. What are you guys up mm. to? I think this is Mine was definitely right better, and I got done in that like less than half the time. Say You're back, pushing it, it off seemed, the line. Seems like his is way great. You're yeah. pushing it off the line. You guys are cheaters. No, I think it's good. So <sighs> we, we need you to determine the winner. Okay, so. We can tell, of course, we have a winner here, and it's Tony. I appreciate what? that. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, Ryan, but it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are cheating. <laughs> you guys are both cheating. We have our clamshell framework put together, just like we said we wanted to do. And now we gotta shrink it down just a little bit so that it will fit better on here. We're going to take a few things off, some disassembly with the cowl, wipers, and radiators, things that we know we can adjust. And now, Ryan, you lost a bet. I believe it's time for your punishment. Wait, we didn't really have any terms outlined for punishment, but Whatever. It's in that room over there. This door? That door. I'm not looking. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no! 